So, hello and welcome to another Woodworking Wisdom. So today, back in the prep room, what we're going to do, we're going to make a chessboard, something I've never done. So a bit of a learning curve for me. Carl Wynn's then going to turn some pieces, so we'll get the completed chess set. So my chessboard at the moment, there it is. Okay, so we have some squares, we've got some sycamore and some oak. A little bit of a contrast in colour and density. Other thing we're going to do, we're going to make it end grain instead of long grain. Why? I like the idea of having end grain fibres showing. I think it'll look more aesthetical pleasing. It's going to cause less movement problems, I hope. So that could be another benefit. Also be stronger to glue up because I'm not gluing end grain onto side grain. So all side grain fibres will help the aspect when we glue it up. So that's really my aim with that. So we've got a pile of wood. There. 45, 50 mil square, the sycamore is a bit bigger, a bit longer in length, so I'm going to leave it in longer length, so I'll probably trim some of it to shorter lengths to get what we want. Board thickness, we're aiming probably for about 30 mil thick, don't want it too heavy, but chunky enough, okay? So, having got the squares, they're rough so we're going to machine them up, surface plane them. So, for our chest set, we have some sycamore, so a nice light colour. We've got some English egg. These are rough sawn squares, nice and dry. We're going to do end grain stuff, as we said. So the first thing we're going to do, really, is plane them up, surface plane them to create a straight edge and right angle corner. Then from there, we can thickness them so we can glue them together to start making up that board. All right, so that gives us our square stock. So we're going to surface plane these, and they need to be really, really accurate. Um, that squareness is so important. There's nothing worse than getting for a job and suddenly realise you checked or forgot to check the one minor little thing, the fence. So, before I start, I'd always come in with a square, have a check, make sure it's nice and square. Such an important thing, the fence actually on lots of planes, you take it on and off, you don't think anything about when you put it back on there. So we want to check it's nice and square, that's going to help produce our accuracy we want. So, that's pretty good. I've already cleaned the bed and waxed the table on the planer, so everything's going to glide nice and easily. Okay, so all those things add up. Safety stuff, we need our glasses. Very muffs. When we get to this, we can put them all. We're going to go across, cut our cuts, produce a square corner on each block. So I'm just going to turn the air on. we do the first few. So you've seen me pass that over the thickness of, or the surface planer, we've got a nice square corner we've generated. So I'm just going to highlight that with a pencil so I make sure you know, I've got just done an arrow either side, just to give me a bit of a guide. If you're watching past it nice and slowly, this is oak, it's reasonably hard. But actually by going slower, I get a better finish on the surface. It's too easy to throw it across quickly. You get lots of little ripple lines. I want to try and get a nice clean surface if I can. Other thing, got the bridge guard in, we've got a separate little gap, just enough to get in here. I'm working on the back of the plane, and why? I um, have the belief the blades are probably going to be sharper back there. Most people don't reach back there too much, so maybe that's a good thing. We set that fence up, no, it's nice and accurate. All those little things add up, but that slow feed's quite an important part. Get it across there, almost think about the thicknessing speed that the machine pulls through it. That's the sort of feed you should be going at. So, done one, I've got the rest of them to do. We get you back in when we start playing with the thickness, I think. So before we start, let's clean the bed. I know it sounds a weird thing, but the thickness in bed takes a lot of residue off the timber coming off, the surface plate and everything else, so it can get a little bit sticky. It will make the material stick, won't slide nicely. You then have to push it. Ah, it's not good. So how about a little bit of resin cleaner? Wipe that. I'll get rid of the debris. Then, um, gonna go some workshop wax. So this is machine wax, purely, especially done, purely for that sort of thing. So a little bit of wax, a bit of tissue paper. This will help the material glide. So wipe on a thin layer. Buff it off. So the nice thing with the machine wax, it doesn't interfere with things like your finishes, your glues, so it won't interfere with any of that. But, so, done that, let's lose our paper. We're going to start with the thickest bits, and we need to measure this. 
get the glasses down quick look oh, these are about 50 mil square so we've got a bit to come up first got a digital scale on here so we're going to wind this up Go for 49. Lock the table. So our arrow has got to go fail. So the arrow's down on the table. The rough saw bit at the moment's on the top and the side here. So we've got to do those two edges. Looking at grind direction, a little bit either side. So let's go from there. Turn it over. So, I'm going to machine them all up then nice and square. We've got to take a bit of material off of this, get it down to the same size as the oak. So we're going to get them accurately done, going to do all of them, and then we can do the gluing up bit. So that's the next little stage. So now finish machining, and then we'll get you back to do the gluing up. So we're going to glue these up to make them into strips. Now, initially when you think about this, you need 64 little cubes. I've got 40 mil square by whatever length we want. I'm not going to try and glue 64 little bits together, not in one go, forget it, the glue will be setting, oh, it's going to move all over the place, it's going to be, it'll be a mess. So if we glue them up into strips, then we can cut them and then re-glue them, take a lot of time and effort out of it. But at the moment, the sycamore is quite long lengths, so left them as longer lengths, it's easier to machine. I'm going to cut them shorter, it'll make it easier to glue up, easier to handle, but give me enough to work out of to make our board, all right? So we're going to cut them into, I'm going to go for about 300 mil lengths. It gives me enough to do one, two, three, four, eight, ooh, eight lengths or eight bits out of each 300 mil length. Okay, so then we're going to take the sycamore ones, we're going to cross cut them, so we're going to go off to the chop saw. So I can light it up, put my glasses on. <laughs> Lose that a little bit. That's nice and clean, then we're going to come down to a set lump. So you can start laying these out how we've got to actually glue them together. So I've got four oak, four sycamore. Lay them out on the bench. In reality, we need space in between, so we're going to have oak one, sycamore one, oak one, sycamore one, oak one, and the sycamore, oak one on the end. So just seeing how things come together, I'll we'll push them to things line up nicely, there's no gaps. Get a level on one end will be good. And that in. So we're just going to look at how that comes together at this stage. We get that colour contrast. As we said, we're looking at hand grain for this. Uh, you can start to play around with your grain formation, look at how it looks. That will be quite an important part as well. This stage, then you start looking at your clamps after aspect. So we're going to set that up, and I'll explain how we've set it up, and what we're doing and why, okay? So next stage really will be to put the clamps on the bench, load the blocks, dry, do a test one, see what happens. What we want to try and keep everything nice and flat. We don't want it cupping. We don't want lots of glue coming out. Because that's more problematic to clean up. And definitely with the oak, this you'll get a reaction of the steel off the clamp and the glue, create a big black line. We don't want that. So let's start to play around with the clamps in a second, then we'll get you back in to have a look. All right, so the all important gluing up bit. So we've done a little bit of prep on the bench. We've got a few things ready. It takes a little bit of thinking. So. Things that might help you or stop the aggro later. So simple things on something like the sash clamps, they're steel. As much as they've got a blackened body which helps stop the rust marks and stop them going rusty, I might put some masking tape just on the bars 
that'll help keep the work off, stop the glue sticking to the clamp and creating that black line we get, especially with the oak. So that'll help a little bit there. I've got a couple of bearers underneath here which we're going to use just to help support the wood, just to bring it off and keep it an equal thickness. First piece can go into there that hasn't got to have any glue on it. These are turned through 90 degrees, so the ones that are over here. To help pressurize the other way to keep everything flat, I've got a pine button, something as a laminate material. I've put some sticky tape on here, so again the glue won't stick to this. So simple little things, just some sticky tape will help. So that's ready. Next thing, then we're going to start gluing up. So I've got the blocks on here. I've turned them all through 90 degrees, so the glue face is now up. One clamp on the end just to hold it. We can put all the glue on here, then pick them up singly, put them in through 90 degrees. Okay, so let's start our gluing up then. So just working with the silicon glue spreader at the moment, just trying to spread it out. We don't want loads and loads of glue. The more glue you have, the more glue you're going to pull out. But what I need to make sure we get it all. A couple of bits of dry glue that I assume we've got in there. So just picking those out. It's probably come off the lid of the bottle. So now we're going to start that gluing up bit. So take that one off. Our workpiece in for 90 degrees. Next one, bring it up, we roll it over. Next one, front edge, trying to keep them quite level. Last one in, bring those back, look. We want something to go either side so we don't create a dent. Again, some hard wearing laminate type material will work nicely on there. And just gently trying to tighten the clamps up. Got to try and do equally, or well, the whole work will skid about a bit. Or oh, any bit out there, push those back. This stage, just finger tight. Oh, right where it's coming up. Okay, we want to stop that happening. So we set about these. So we've got pine button with the sticky tape, something to go underneath there. Problem with a sash clamp like this is you haven't got that height. So we can take the pine ones out, or I'm going to be really sneaky. Couple more short bits. One up. Now if I'm careful, we've got the other end. We can lift that up. That just gives us a bit more space in underneath. Got to go in under on the top. Clamp in. One. Do those up. Now I'm just going to undo the sash clamp, quarter turn, do it back up because if anything is misaligning there, it will help it push down. And again, at this stage, we're not doing things up too tight. Last clamp we're going to put in across the top, set a lamp up. Now by putting the clamp across the top, we'll stop it cupping too much upwards with the pressure we've just put in. I'm going to prep this clamp just the same as we did the others. Do 
fingertips just feel what's going on. A few lines of glue, but not a lot else. Nothing feels out of line at this stage. If we can get rid of some of that glue, we'll be good. So then we've got to leave it to dry. It's like watching paint dry, isn't it? So this will set overnight, give it a good amount of time. Then we're going to do the next stage and cut those, then glue them back together the other way. So having left this to dry overnight, hopefully everything will come out nice and neatly. So got all those sash ramps and everything to come off. So let's just gently take these off, lift it up. So this has got that masking tape we said about. And peel that off, let's bring that back. Stop it dancing about too much up in the air. That's good. No black lines on the board, which is fantastic, especially to if we're using oak. So great little trick there, just a little bit of tape. these side G clamps off now. These I had oh, bits of pine but we've done and uh, actually a high density MDF is what the green is. I don't know. So again about battens about trying to push this down keeping it level so we've got that stick on tape we've done on the top. Really good for this. You saw how that, that's just falling off which is great. My worry is it gets stuck on there and then, then you've got another battle so work really nicely though. So I move those clamps. the other side to do. So we can take that out, go and put those clamps away. Now again we're good. And we're going to want these again later so just having a look what we've got. Having a feel, a little bit of glue. But hopefully, one piece of wood. Other sash clamps are going to keep there. I'll keep the tape on them because again, we're going to need it a bit later. So, Got our board. Actually, as the thing goes, and people are going to go, well, how flat's that? Got a little bit there, but we've got a few glue lines. It's glue more than anything else. Now, with this as a thing, so with this as a, an object now, and it's it's amazing. Lots of you say, where do we get ideas from? Some this was one of your ideas. Can we make a chest set? Okay. So we start to do a bit of research. Most of the guys, when I look at this, I've got some form of big speed sander. I, I can have one. We could book one out for this. You know, we'd probably use it for other things. The other problem is we could go orbital sander. It'll round the edges a bit. So go be a little bit careful. Now all, all I want to really remove on this is the glue. So let's get something set up. We have that, that. Where should we be? Trying to look at where I am on the bench in relationship to where the object's going to be. I don't want it falling off. Let's go back a stage. One in there. Ooh, I don't know. That one there. And I think that one can go in there as well. So just using parkwood setup, something just to hold this now. All I really want to do is get rid of the glue lines that are creating that step. So, best thing I can do, that cabinet scraper. Just scrape off and I can see the glue. It's a shiny layer, really small. I'm working down the joint points. A little bit there, look. Again, this will help keep it flat. We're not taking lots off. Having a feel, got a tiny bit of glue this end, so I'm just going to bring it back round. We can work a bit more cross grain if we needed to. One of the joys with a scraper, where it'll work too. Again, just really feeling if I've got any little glue lips that I want to get rid of. That feels pretty good, hopefully. 
something pretty flat. Obviously got to do both sides. So having got it flat, we've now got to cut those sections. So we're going to trim the ends off so we can get a nice clean level, nice and square to the edge. We've got no indents down the sides here because we've used bits of material either side to protect it when we clamped it together. So we're going to cut an end off square and then cut into lengths. So we're going to go to the table saw. So the next bit really is about levelling up this end, getting it cut nice and clean and square to that outside face. That's quite important. Looked at different ways of this. A few of you might say, can you not use your shooting board? It's quite a lot of material. It's 40 mil. Uh, it's going to take a bit of oomph. So table saw is hopefully going to make life a bit easier. So I've checked my fence. Again, I've done a couple of practice cuts to make sure the fence is nice and square. But down on there, I've got a sight throw. So just for a second, I'm going to put normal glasses on. I'm going to bring this down. Go look along. Don't want to take too much off. Try not to waste it. Time to swap the glasses. So first cut really is just levelling that end up. So we got something clean all the way down through. Nice and flat, nice and level. Next thing we've got to rip this down into the whips we want. Now we've already set the saw up. We've got 35 mil, an inch and a half. So I've got a length width there. A couple of things I'm going to play around with on the saw now. First thing, the fence is projecting right out the back here, past the back of the blade. So at this stage, it's going to be better just to bring it in. That's about giving clearance. So I've got it level pretty much with the back of the blade. So once I've cleared the back of the blade, that's not going to get in the way. It's not going to trap that piece of material. Just to give me a bit more access. We can lose that. We can lock up our table just to secure it, make it easier to get to. The first few of these are going to be quite easy to push. You can get both hands on. We've got this big bubble guard. Um, I know the guys in the States are going to say, why not take it off? Actually, legally, I have to have it on here to use this. So it's got to be there. What's this about? Adding safety. So, can cause things where you have to think about. So I've made up a simple push block. And I mean, it's so easy to have. Yes, it will do this one task, but it's going to make my life easier. I've got something to hold. I can push the board. It's pushing a bit diagonally. I can put my fingers just on here enough. We can push it through. All right, so it's going to make it easier to maintain and get it through. It's quite large. So actually, once we got through, it's clear in the back of the blade again. So it's making sure I push that bit of work further and forward. So we're going to cut those off. So just checking where we are. Going to cut my board that we've made there. That's good. Coming to a section, that'll be enough. I can bring it back. First cut. So, same thing again, we can use simple push stick, my angle, just to create that bit of pressure. Push block and push it through, I can safely take it off the back. So the board really helped, made, made it so much easier, more controllable, gave me something positive to push with. So we've got our strips, got a few more than we need, they're all in order of how we cut them at the moment. We're going to take them back over to the bench, we've got to glue them back together now. It's been long winded, doesn't it? Glue it back again, cutting up, glue it, oh, okay, but we're getting there. So it's going to be quite interesting to see, we said we're going to have angry, how the colour variation is going to work quite nicely there. Alright, so we're going back to the whip bench. I haven't got them back on the bench. They're laid out. We need eight bits. So we're there. So I'm just going to put them there. 
So we're just going to lay them out in the order. This one we've got to turn over. Just playing around, trying to get the clamps a little bit more central and square. Just learning up the blocks a little bit. I'm going to have to pull them over properly again in a second with a clamp. So first stage, two sash clamps, just to pin that together but without putting loads of pressure. Too much pressure at this stage, you'll never move anything. Just checking their level there, they're pretty good. So we set about a couple more clamps to go across. Again, at this stage, none of the clamps are done up really tight. We can move things about. This is about trying to get that orientation nicely. Now just gently tighten the clamps. Seeing where we are. On the board, so a high one there. So just check where they are. These are coming off again in a second, there's in the top sash clamps. Just finger tight for a second. The two have done their job and pulled it in, We've got a nice level side. Didn't need to do a similar thing to what we did. On the first glue up stage, we lift this up. We need just a little bit more height in underneath the clamps. And to check things are flat, we'll go back to that method we used. And a few more G clamps. Down the edges, they feel good. And stop the bowing action. Let's put the sash clamp in there. Just going to turn it around so I get more access to the handle end. Again, we've got that masking tape. Last little bit before it dries. Nicer to clean it off. Just a little bit. We know what a scrape off. And just, just looking at things are closed up nicely, but nice and level as well, which is good. So having got it glued, just in case now, I'm leaving it to dry again, okay? And make sure, you know, you're leaving it long enough that it's gonna dry, we're going On the technique we've done where we're using the end grain fibers, you've actually got vertical fibers coming up, so you're actually gonna get more adhesive on the, on the bonding strength, if you like instead of gluing end grain onto side grain. So this should be stronger, but it's gonna take a bit of time to go off, all right? So next stage, when we get back in, we've gotta clean up the top. So we're on chessboard. What have we done with this? We've just cleaned up the surface a little bit. I've knocked the glue off the top. I've given it a light sound with something really coarse. In actual fact, some 80 grit. So I've really cleaned that up. Next thing we wanna try and do is do something as a board around the edge. So again, just to save a bit of time, we've got some oak. I've actually glued on sycamore strip so I get this thin white band on the inside the oak on the outside actually the thin white bands are going to go against the board and then we do a molding around the edge so we've got four of those we've actually got to cut a mitre on either end and I hate cutting mitres right? mitres are really difficult to get really nice and clean so best tip to start with get some scrap sounds weird doesn't it make sure you set things up so I've got to use chop saw we can cut these Test how they are. I can adjust the top saw to get things nice and clean, see what happens. All right, better to practice on some scrap before you get to the real bits. All right, so we're going to do the cutting in a minute. We've got those four bits and we'll cut those. Going to do our mitres. So, on our chessboard, we've obviously got all those little squares. We've glued them up, we've laminated that all together. In reality, just about everything starts as square. We've got a nice square platform to work on. So everything here, nice, accurate 90 degree corner. 
So what do we need for our mitres? A 45 degree mitre. Now we're going to do chop saw, speed it up. You need to be a little bit sort of uh, unsure at this stage. I said you do some plastic cuts, so I've done some stuff in some tulip. I played around with the mitre setting, 45 degrees, light adjustment. Might need to do that first. So before you dash into the job and cut the expensive bits of wood, we're playing with those. Set it up, look how it comes together. To check they're going to join nicely. There's nothing worse than cutting them and finding them they're not right. So I played around with the saw a little bit, tweaked things just slightly. I've got a little bit of movement on my 45. I've locked it back in. So hopefully we're pretty good. All right, so from there, we can cut our bits of oak. So have our oak bit. Have our sycamore edge. You want to go inside. We need our safety glasses. Now again with this, not too forceful on the cut. Allow the saw to cut it. I've got oak. It's not a soft material, so it's going to take just that little bit of effort. If I force it, the blade will deflect a little bit. Don't want to waste too much. Let's just check which one this is. Some of these have got a couple of wormholes in. We're going to try and see if we can lose them. I cut right up onto that corner, lining up on my fence. I can Nice slow movement to just a nice clean cut. We obviously need to do all four. So we've cut all four, one end only. All right, that's worth doing. You can then start to do and play around. We'll start to bring things in, check how they come together. All right, for any minute adjustment you want to do, that's not bad. And again, you've really got to look at it nice and cleanly and check what's going on. So we bring these in, we slide them down, just checking how those joints come in. Everything lines up, that's not too bad. Okay, a little bit on there, wiggle it about. And this is the problem with doing mitres. You've got a bit of movement here. We could possibly look at how we could fix these. And I'm just going to glue them when we get to it. But you can see how that hopefully comes together. So we're back over on the bench because it's just easier to lay things out. So we've got our board, we've got our sides, we've got our mitres we've just cut. I'm going to position these and bring them together. Get them level so I can feel I've got a small step. Slide it back. Looking at my white sycamore bit. This is going to then allow me but. One in there. So things haven't moved down here. Go our square. I want to continue line down through. I pick the back of the square up. I can just hook it on the corner here and draw a line. That's given us the overall length. We've got to cut the next one. Okay, so we've just set the mitre saw up. So we've got our pencil line, which is the overall length. We check where I might have done. I've got a rough line coming across telling me which way we're cutting, but there's nothing worse than cutting it the wrong way at this stage. Lemp stuck block just clamped on. I've got something that I can come up to, makes it easy to repeat it. Uh, that way, I can go to there, check my line. Now, if anything at the moment, I think I'm just a fraction too long. I'm just over my pencil line. So, how much do we move? Yeah, nice and controlled, let it stop before you lift this out. So I can cut this exactly the same, so hold it against your fence. So I've cut all our mitres now, just look at my pencil lines, a little bit over here, so at the moment we can leave it set, 
show you, we could possibly use a ruler in a minute, fine, adjust it if we need to bring that in just a little bit without moving anything. That can be good to do. So we get back to the bench. We're going to see how these fit around the board. We've also got the shooting board. We could always trim a little bit off. Okay, so having trimmed them, come back to the bench. We've got a nice flat surface to lay it out on. We can check how the mitres come together when things are done. We've got mitre saw, a little lump here, a bit weird. Um, so I can feel that one. This one's not bad. This is just like a blade line where I've come down slowly. As I said, the oak's quite hard. Depends on the condition of the blade. Probably get a bit blunt. So we can always go mitre trimmer. All right, so we're going to use our shooting board. So on here, we can bring it up. If we're going to trim anything, we can use shooting board set up, 45. So we lock this on the bench nicely. We've sharpened the plane. That's paramount. That's a weird thing to say, isn't it? But you need to have this sharp. So all I'm really doing, trimming off minute little bits. So again, get things positioned, slide this up. Hand has got to lock in place. The temptation, it'll want to pull it forward. Not too much pressure with your plane, just back and forward. And I know with the oak, definitely at times feel like you're not doing anything, but I'm getting stuff. We're trimming this back a little bit. Don't need to take much off. Double check things. Having done that test fit thing, we're going to clamp things up. How do we clamp this? From when miters normally fit, everything moves around when you try and tighten it. You use normal clamps. You can almost chase it around the bench. And then the glue's going off, everything else. So it's that kind of scenario. First, we'll do a quick check. We're still going to use these. So we've got a ratchet strap. These are a Veritas corner clamp. Quite nicely done to their clip on, but just going to the ratchet strap. Now, the nice thing this is they're actually pushing the pressure towards the middle. We're not going to chase it around so much. So hopefully, it's going to make it a lot easier just to glue up. Let's just get that strap in under that lip. There it is. That'll stay there. So we know that we can use that. That's pretty much ready to go. So let's just take these out. And we've checked, obviously, how these clamp in. I haven't numbered anything on this. It's pretty square. They're cut all the same size. So we're going to use some Type 1, 2 glue. We've got our glue spreader. Clamping them together should be quicker and easier to apply that glue. We've got to come down here. Some of you are going to say, could you use a domino or a biscuit fitting? You can. I also have that view. Traditionally, things would have been just glued together. So do you need to have that biscuit joint? So I've got the glue on there, I'm just uh, have to drop them in. This one's got the wormholes in, so I'm going to turn it over. Put that on the underside. Same reason for that one. And there. So now we can start to just pull things in, hopefully. It'll all come together nicely. So just gently start and tighten that ratchet strap. Work round. Just lifting the blocks about. Get them all equal. Pull them in. Get things level and go. Or a mallet, which has got a rubber head on it. And tap these down. Just have a quick feel on the underside, check things feel level. A little bit on that one to come down. Okay, good. So we're glued up. Mitres look good. So now we've got to do. Let it dry. So I've been glued on the edge bits. Got all the mitres nice and clean. We've got to clean things up a little bit. 
So I started looking at, we've got a little bit of a lip on here, but everything's actually nicely glued together. So to level this back, well, most of you have reached for a sander maybe, oh, but I want to keep it flat. The sander will tend to roll, it soften the corners a bit. So at this stage, I'm going to go to hand plane. So really what I've got, slight lip on the edging, a little bit to get on the middle still, because you haven't flattened that back totally. So we're going to go with a plane. So we've just sharpened the plane up. We've got a low angle plane that will suit better for that end grain surface we've got to cut. So we're going to basically level the side. Bench wise, we've got the path system. We can lock this in. We've got cam on here. Lock that down. Stop everything moving. All right. So tighten that one up. Off we go in a minute. So we've even leveled the top of the board, make sure everything is nice and flat, we cleared the glue off, so important. Why do a hand plane over, say, a sander? If you go orbital sander, which we're going to do in a minute, and you've got lots to take off, we're going to soften it. We've got very hard oak sections, soft to sycamore, so it won't give me a nice flat surface. So by going with the plane, we can level it back, we can then sand it with a finer grit, so we should get something that's flatter, okay? Some of you are going to say, why not go be with a big panel type sander machine? That'd be lovely. But I don't have one. Do you have one? Most of you, if you're hobbyists, you're not going to have that kind of setup. So hand plane can level it back nicely. Then we go to our sander. So all we really got to do is sand the top now. So we've got Merca sander, got good extraction. We've got some Abernet paper on there. This is 120 grit. What we're going to do, hopefully. Right, so let's cut the time right down. It might seem like you know, that's all I need because we did all the hard work with the hand plane taken off as shavings. Another thing we obviously need to do, hand sand around the edge. So let's just set up for that. I'm going to actually come down to here and put a half peg in the front of the vise that I know to hold it. Nice and some brazier. We've got 120 on there, so same pads. Using cork block, keep everything nice and crisp. Going to work around all four sides. And again, at this stage, trying to keep things nice and crisp. Now, as a group, when we've been doing this, so you've got mum, we've got a couple of other people in here, we've got stuff doing the camera work today. We had a conversation about doing a moulded edge on this with a router cutter. No, no, I want to keep it thick and chunky. I got outvoted. So I'm going to leave it quite square. And you're seeing how quick I'm sanding this up. And again, I've done the edge with the plane whilst we leveled it. So I've planed off anything that needed to be got rid of. Level thing back. That looks good. Next thing we'll do, we've got quite sharp corners now. We've done this before, a little sanding block, just with a mitre cut, a bit of a brazier screwed together. What does that allow me to do? I can just literally sit it on at an angle, get my flat here. Ooh. Five strokes there. Let's turn it round. One, two, three, four, five. So if we do five on each, we're going to get something that's quite repetitive and it'll just soften that sharp corner. Get a flat. Part of the idea of having the big flat surface around the edge of the board, you've got somewhere to put all those pieces as you're taking them off. And then last little bit. Just taking that sharp corner of the mitre section right on the edge. Just trying to soften the very edge, get rid of those sharp corners.
Okay, good. So on our board, we've got our oak outer, a sycamore. One of the things we tried to do, and actually it's amazing with the, the oak growing long grain and end grain, you've already got a different colour feature. But I want to see if I can darken the oak a little bit more by not applying anything to the wood as such. That sounds weird, doesn't it? So what we're going to use, we're going to use a plastic bag. We're going to use this as a tent. I want to raise this up so I can get air all the way around. So I've got a couple of these. Little studs that we can put in underneath. Can I put our board in? Gently, and I've got the way up. But I want it. And again, just a couple of little spacer bits. So then to try and add some colour to it, I'm going to use a naturally occurring substance. This is ammonia. So hold your breath. My ammonia is a bit old, been hanging around a few years, so I'm hoping this will still work. Carefully, got to put in there. The fumes of the ammonia will change the colour. So having put it in the bag, we're going to leave it overnight, and hopefully the oak will come back a rich chocolate brown colour, just from the fumes of the ammonia. That's the aim. So we've left this overnight. Right? Give it a good time to, to do it some its damage if you like. So gonna leave it overnight, we've done that. So now we're gonna open this up. I'm gonna take the pots and put them out of the way for a minute because these are gonna smell. Then we've got our tent system. Take our board out. We can lose the bag for a minute. Let's give you an idea that no, we can get a bit closer. This is the oak off cut we cut off the end of when we did the mitre. Look at the colour difference. That lovely, much richer, deeper brown colour. And you're not applying anything to it. Now, that will only work with certain timbers. Oak, acacia, something that contains tannic acid. So it reacts with the tannic acid in the wood and it's just purely the fumes off the ammonia. You're not applying it to anything, but remember, only certain materials, all right? So, oh, I think you can see, it brings that colour out really in. Doesn't affect the sycamore, because that hasn't got any ta tannic acid in. Okay, next stage we're going to do, we're going to oil this. We're going to start with the underside, we've got our oil all the way round. We're just going to go with a finishing oil, and obviously I'm going to need to build the coats up. What so, easy to do, we're going to brush on, but look at it, bring that colour out, wow. And I know this will soak this up for the first few coats, so let's put a coat on. We'll work all the way round. So if you think about what we've done here, we've obviously laminated this together. Now we've made chessboard. Could be a chopping board though, couldn't it? Exactly the same sequence you could go through in different stages. The end grain material here, really soaking that up, which is good. Just so I can bring it up off the deck a little bit. With these being flat for a minute. Just gonna flip that over. We can do exactly the same. So obviously we're putting the first coat on, you can see that colour change. Just going to lose it now, look right into there, brings that colour out. So we're going to put probably three or four coats on minimum, we're going to build it up. The first coat will drink it, the next few coats will apply a bit lighter, but we'll build it up to a nice satin gloss finish if you like. Nothing too shiny, this will help protect it as well. So, we'll show you when we're done. Let's have a look, what have we got? We've got Hopefully I'll finish chessboard. Oh, we've done this, a wax on top of that oil. So I've let the oil dry, five or six coats, build it up. Then put on a wax coat on. You can go with a soft paste wax and just buff it. On the underside, just to keep it raised up for a little leather feet. Okay, nothing special, nothing over the top. 
There was a chessboard when we looked at this. We wanted to keep it relatively simple. So why do I say it like that? Wouldn't it make it obtainable for most of you that got those basic things? You might have a planar thicknesser, a bandsaw, table saw. We don't have a big speed sander in here. We don't have a domino. We've used glue. We've used clamps. Everyday items that most of you will have. So it makes it obtainable that you should, if you want, have a go. You could make this into a, a chopping board, not just a chess board. Right? So there's different things you could use. The techniques we've shown you get to that same stage. Um, Colour-wise, the fuming really does change the colour of that oak. You can see how different that looks. Hopefully on there. We'll get you in a minute have a closer look. Other little things along the way that really helped. Those little Veritas corner clamps when we glued those mitres. I hate doing mitres, okay? I can't emphasise that enough. Trying to glue mitres up and get them all lined up. Oh, wow. So they really did help. And they're really nice to get on there. If it's not a 45 degree mitre, you might have something. That I've got to think now. 120 degrees, three-sided. It'll still adjust. So really clever little things to use with a strap band clamp, okay? Uh, other things that help, blocks of wood with sticky tape on. When we clamp down and glue things together, stop the glue sticking to everything, really good little technique. So nothing special. Hope you've enjoyed this as a little project. All right. So we've got the board. We've got pieces to come on this as well, so they will be there soon. We'll bring the whole lot together. So hopefully if you've enjoyed the video, give us that thumbs up, share it. Let's get your friends see what we've been up to. It'd be interesting to know what they think. All right. Something like I said, quite easy for most of us to make. If you follow little tips and guides, there you go. So you all can have your own chessboard.